All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome. If you're new, thank you for taking time out of your day to check the video out. We have more PlayStation news, rumors, and leaks to go over and cover here today. So do me a favor before we dive into today's topics. If you end up enjoying the video or finding it informative, be sure to leave it a like. And if you are new here to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button as well. We're starting here with an update for the Concord closed beta weekend that by the time this video goes out is already happening being reported by push square they say sony has announced that this weekend's concord beta previously only accessible if you pre-ordered the game is now open to all playstation plus members as long as you have an active membership for any one of the three playstation plus tiers you'll be able to download and play the ps5 beta during its early access weekend the news comes from a fresh playstation blog post where it also announced the Concord beta can be preloaded on PS5. That was actually yesterday. Your progress from the two beta phases will not carry over to the full game, but for participating, you'll earn yourself a weapon charm and a star flare business card. So it seems that Sony decided to make a change at the last minute here with the Concord closed beta, where originally you were only going to be able to play it if you pre-ordered the game but now they're opening it up to PS Plus subscribers. Probably a smart move. As most of you know, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of excitement around Concord, and there is a lot of negativity surrounding it. And so allowing more people to play for the first round of the beta, I think is a wise decision because, you know, this is a game that if it is going to find any type of success or sustainability, people are gonna have to go hands-on with it, and it's not a free-to-play game. So this will be the opportunity for, you know, people who are at the very least subscribed to PlayStation Plus to go hands on with it and decide for themselves if the game is going to be worth a $40 purchase for them or worth their time at all. So, yeah, let me know if you are going to play the beta now that it's going to open up to PlayStation Plus members. Now, keep in mind, this is just the first beta. They do have a second beta that's going to go live later in the month and that's going to be open to everybody so let me know if it's something you're going to be trying out we're moving on to the next topic which talks about a playstation game being confirmed as a ps5 console exclusive whereas originally people were unsure if this was the case being reported by gaming bolt it says mihoyo's next big free-to-play action rpg zenless zone zero launched last week and it has proven to be massively popular having surpassed 50 million downloads already. On consoles, however, the game's audience is limited to PS5, with Nintendo and Xbox players having to watch from the sidelines, and that is going to remain the case for a while longer, it seems. The official PlayStation YouTube channel recently uploaded a trailer commemorating the release of Zenless Zone Zero, and at the end of the trailer officially confirms that the game does indeed have an exclusivity deal with PlayStation. Specifically, the action RPG will remain a PS5 console exclusive until at least six months after release, according to the trailer, which means the game won't be coming to non-PlayStation consoles until at least January. So this is something that I thought was worth mentioning because this is a game that for me personally, I don't have any interest in, but I did see quite a few people talking about and I did see that they announced they surpassed 50 million downloads, which is massive. And this game is actually massive. And so people were kind of wondering with it just launching on the PS5 and the PS5 alone, was this a choice by the publisher or did Sony strike some kind of timed exclusivity deal here? Now we have the confirmation that they did strike a timed exclusivity deal, not a very long one, about half a year. And so, yeah, I'm curious, are you somebody who is playing Zenless Zone Zero? If so, um, are you surprised to hear that Sony decided to lock this down as a timed uh, console exclusive? Let me know down in the comments below. Moving on to the next topic, we have a horror game for PS5 that was actually delayed but now has a new release date. This is coming from Push Square. Phasmophobia, the super successful multiplayer horror game, has had a rough journey from PC to consoles. While it's seen its share of delays, developer Kinetic Games has now confirmed it's finally coming to PS5 later this year during our in-game Halloween event. 
In a community update on Steam, Kinetic says it shared the frustration with console players about the delayed release, but didn't want to commit to a release window until it had one it could meet. No specific date has been given, just that it will be launching during its Halloween event, presumably narrowing things down to around October. Once launched, all players will have access to crossplay, allowing you to play the newest version of the game with everyone, including those using VR on any platform, the post reads. Additionally, future updates will arrive day and date on all platforms, so the console versions won't be behind the PC version. Phasmophobia is a first-person ghost hunting game in which teams of players enter creepy locations and try to track down spirits. Using various clues from the environment and the ghost's behavior, you must deduce what type of ghost it is and escape before anyone falls victim to fatal supernatural encounters. It's been super popular throughout its early access phase. The console versions were confirmed in June of last year with the plan to release in October of 2023. Unfortunately, due to a fire at the offices and other difficulties, the console port was indefinitely delayed. Now about a year down the line, it looks like PS5 players will finally get their chance to join the party. So yeah, I thought that this was worth pointing out because I've actually heard about this game in the past and some people have actually suggested this game to me and I didn't realize that it didn't release yet or that it got delayed. I guess I just wasn't paying much attention. But yeah, this game definitely sounds pretty unique, pretty interesting. And uh, I think it's also interesting that they're saying here you're going to be able to play the game with people in VR as well. So I'm not entirely sure if there's going to be a PSVR 2 version, but maybe there will be. Either way, wanted to let you guys know about this. Let me know if it's a game you're going to be checking out or not. Moving on to the next topic, we have an interesting update with Sony and the developer of PAL World. Reading from PlayStation Lifestyle, there's no PAL World PS5 version yet, but developer Pocket Pair and Sony have announced a joint venture in the form of a new company. Ironically, the company, PAL World Entertainment, is dedicated to expanding the IP. The joint venture is between Sony Music Entertainment, Sony subsidiary Aniplex, and Pocket Pair. In a press release, the company said that they aim to expand and develop new businesses associated with the hit game. After singing Pal World's praises and reiterating that it's currently available on every platform but PlayStation and Nintendo, the press release announces that a joint venture will not only expand the game's reach, but it'll also revolve around merchandise, global licensing, and other commercial business activities. Pal World Entertainment has already begun developing exclusive merchandise, which will be revealed at Billy Billy World 2024 this month in Shanghai, China. Pre-orders will be available through Aniplex. Both Pocket Pair and Sony have previously hinted at a PlayStation release for Pal World, which is currently in early access. It remains to be seen if this deal will result in any PlayStation exclusivity in the future, but will be very surprised if Pal World doesn't land on Sony's platforms once it's fully launched. And so, yeah, I wanted to let you guys know about this because it's definitely an interesting turn of events. We know that Pal World is not available on PS5. It's currently on console, only available on Xbox. And you would think that if something like this was going to be announced, maybe it would have been with Microsoft, but instead it's actually with Sony. But more specifically, Sony Music Entertainment and the subsidiary Aniplex. It seems that Sony s believes that, I don't know, Pal World maybe can become like the next Pokemon in a way. Uh, we saw how insanely popular it was at the beginning of this year. It kind of took everything by storm. Uh, remains to be seen if it has the longevity and the staying power, but Sony seems to believe it does because they're getting involved here. And um, yeah, it'll be really interesting to see uh, more specifically on the PlayStation side of things what this may result in, but had to give you guys this update. Moving on to the next topic, we have... Another update on PlayStation Stars and the fact that it's finally back online. It says here, coming from PlayStation Lifestyle, PlayStation Stars is finally back online across the globe, but a number of players are complaining about missing points. The outage lasted nearly one and a half months for people in the Americas who are finally getting the program back as we speak. If you're in the region and don't have access to PS Stars yet, update or refresh your application or try again in a little bit. In an FAQ published following the outage, Sony said that all purchases made during the downtime will have earned points. This person who wrote the article says, I checked my own history and can confirm that I did receive points for the games that I bought on June 29th while the program was down. Other users have also confirmed earning points. However, not everyone has had the same experience. 
Over on the PlayStation Star subreddit, a number of players have complained that they made several purchases while the program was down, but were not awarded any points. Some have provided receipts of their purchases, while others have not. So, yeah, it remains to be seen what Sony's going to do about those who are complaining about missing points. It seems like maybe there is some kind of problem. Maybe it could be a delay where they actually did earn the points. It's just not being reflected yet back to them. But it is interesting that other people are saying that the points they earned for the purchases are showing up. So we'll just have to kind of keep an eye on this. And uh, I don't know how many of you guys listening to this partake in PlayStation Stars. But again, it's a weird situation where it just went down for you know over a month and a half. And Sony didn't really acknowledge it. And now it's just finally coming back. I know that the people who are engaged with it definitely care about getting those points. So we'll see what happens. Moving on to the final topic of the video being reported by PlayStation Lifestyle, Nexon has issued a statement addressing accusations that the first descendant lifted icon art from Destiny. The issue was first brought to light last week by Forbes's Paul Tassi and even caught Bungie's attention. This morning, Nexon issued a statement to IGN pledging to make adjustments. There's no denying that a plethora of the first descendants icons highlighted by Paul Tassi look practically the same as Bungie's. Fans have since conducted their own investigation into the matter and have theorized that the issue stems from Nexon using an icon database called IconDuck, which has an entire set of Destiny icons. The designer of the aforementioned Destiny icon set has admitted that the art was ripped from the font files created by Bungie and its designers. In its statement to IGN, Nexon neither confirmed nor denied anything, but expressed its admiration for Bungie. The company said that the first descendant sought inspiration from Destiny and that it takes the accusation seriously. Nexon says it'll make adjustments to ensure the imagery that may appear similar clearly reflects the unique identity of our game. The publisher also promised to continue improving the first descendant. So yeah, this was something that I saw pop up where People were basically pointing out that, guys, these are just Destiny icons. Like, that's essentially what these are. And obviously, that's a really bad look. Um, that's obviously not right. And of course, if changes aren't going to be made or this was not acknowledged, Sony, Bungie, and you know everybody involved on that side would probably end up doing something about it, taking some type of legal action. Uh, and so it seems like Nexon is trying to play it cool. They're not confirming or denying it. They're just saying, look, we're going to change it and uh, it's going to be our own thing. So I'm assuming nothing more is going to come of this. But there you go. That's going to do it for the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it informative. Again, if you did, be sure to leave it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.